What's up gamers? In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to get the Master Sword that I dressed for this video with only four hearts and the fastest way I could find on how to do it as soon as possible. In Tears of the Kingdom, you don't have to have a lot of hearts in order to get the Master Sword. However, you need to have two full bars of stamina in order to pull this off. Good thing Link comes with one full one already. The first step you need to do is complete 20 shrines. Trust me, it's not as long as you think. There's literally a bunch of them in eyesight that you can mark up on your map. The four mm -hmm. Sky Islands do not count as that was already used to get you your first heart in the game. Once you complete 20 shrines, like I did, go to a goddess statue. I went down to the underground shelter in Lookout Landing and got a stamina upgrade. Remember, four lights of blessing equals one fifth of a stamina bar filling up. Repeat this four more times until you have a second bar completely filled up. Now this part is optional if you feel like you are not that powerful while you're fighting or if you aren't an esports level Zelda player and you need some gear and items to help you out for the upcoming fight. What you want to do is head over to Gerudo Desert and farm some Gibdos. They are everywhere until you clear the Lightning Temple. Gibdos actually have an OP drop called Gibdo Bone that does 40 fuse attack power that break easily. So we'll be using them on arrow attachments. Gibdos are extremely easy to kill if you hit them with any elemental attack and some of them roam around with arrows in them so you can just grab some arrows off of them as well after you're done farming while you're still in the desert head over to this location by a shrine called siwa kama shrine just be careful of the malduga while we're heading towards the sinking sand area head over to this exact circle here and sink down below when you drop down open up that chest and there will be phantom greaves in there that will give you attack up another thing that you can do before we head over to our next destination is scan some amiibos so you can get some goodies from them if you have the amiibos i just got a bow from the twilight princess smash zelda and i got a fierce deity armor top from my majora's mask link amiibo if you don't have any amiibos, don't worry. There's plenty of weapons in the game that you can look around and search for, and they'll probably be on my channel in a different video. If you have any rubies or topazes from rare rocks that you found in little caves, make sure to bring that along with you because that is going to help out a lot. Now, once you're all prepared for this fight, we're going to be heading towards Korok Forest. But as you have noticed, or if you have tried, you can't really get in. If you try to walk into it, it's going to reset you back to the front. If you try to paraglide or even dive into it, it'll also return you back to the entry of it. So to get here, we're going to have to go underground. You want to teleport from Ikochu Shrine over here, which is north of the Woodland Stable on the map over here. You want to keep going through the Minchi Forest. Get ready to dive down into the underground here. So just dive straight down. Use those lights as a reference. And you know, it's just like almost a little pathway lit up for you. Really interesting here. Once you're down here, you're going to do this nice trick, which is called panning up your map so you can see the surface one. And whatever map you leave your game on, on the Pura pad, it's going to stay like that on your mini map. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to follow this pathway that leads us into the Korok Forest. So now that we have the mini map of the above surface there, we're just going to follow that pathway. But make sure to light up the area just a bit. It's just lighting it up so I don't make any mistakes here. There we go. Now that it's all lit up, I'm just going to follow this pathway. And you can see it's almost like I'm, I'm on a giant tree bark. For some reason, your mini map switches back to the underground. And you can't see anything. You can pan it back to the top so you can get it back. So you're looking at the top part to see the reference to the underground. There you go. I just did that right there. Keep following this pathway. Okay, nice and quiet. Feel safe here. And then you notice that the Korok Forest is right over there. And that lines up with it pretty much. And that looks like a spot that you can also ascend. There you go. That looks like the one we got to go to. We're going to head right to the edge here. And this is the part where we just, you know, just, we just want to see. Because we're getting close to something that we weren't supposed to get into, right? So danger only can be here. Make sure to quickly run over the, the gloom. Otherwise, you're going to lose your heart. And then run all the way. It should say Korok Grove. Perfect. Keep going. And then something's going to pop up that's terrifying. And the music's just going to... Oh, yeah. Yep. You're going to run. Run for your life here. We're not going to waste any resources or anything fighting this thing right now. Oh, uh, yeah. And if it grabs you, it just... Yep. Once it gets you, it's it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Especially if you, <laughs> if you don't have all your stamina. Okay. <laughs> Uh, after after surviving that, I'm I'm now headed toward my final destination up here. <laughs> so go ahead and just climb up over here. Again, this is in reference completely to the surface map. So if you're lost, just use the surface map. But you're heading to the spot that does have ascend. 
Before you ascend up, make sure to quickly just tap this light route over here just to reveal the area so you don't have to come back and do this again. And the reason why this light route is here is because there's a shrine right above it. Then these light routes are actually connected to the shrines. Their names are literally just the backwards version of the shrine above. All right, now just go ahead and ascend up right through this. Yeah, it, it takes a bit. Don't worry, your game's not broken. All right, once you get to the top, you realize that you actually made it into the Korok Forest. And you notice it's not looking too nice in here. It looks like some craziness is going on here. Once we're, we're here, you're going to want to head over to the shrine over there. Tap it so you can have a fast teleport to this area so you don't ever have to go through that hell that is down below. We don't, we don't want to go through that again. Once you're done with that, you're just going to go ahead and walk up into this area. Wherever you see this malice, this gloom, this calamity coming from, that's where we're going to go. While we're falling down this chasm, you should hit that subscribe button so Link can get all the way to 500k and beat Ganondorf. Seriously, subscribe. We're posting a lot of Tears of the Kingdom content. So once you make your way down into the belly of the tree or the bottom of the tree, you're then going to have these hand spawns. So I get ready by taking out some topaz arrows because it's the whole group of them, right? So I do an AOE effect. I hit them with that. I then go ahead and use a ruby for an explosion here. Boom, another AOE. So it's doing massive damage. And then I'm like, hey, let me just cool them down here. That's it. And they are pretty much down. So that's phase one. And then you're going to get a phantom Ganon that spawns just based on the title there. I was terrified my first time, but it does show up. And I missed my first one. Complete waste. I shoot my second ruby arrow and I just waste some opals here just to do a little chip damage here. It doesn't really do anything at all. Uh, he can teleport behind you and completely wax you. At this point, I try to get some distance away from Phantom Ganon. And remember what I told us to farm before? Well, we're going to be using those Gibdo bones here. And I want you to see... Oh, he came back again. Okay, like I was saying, we're going to use those Gibdo bones on him. And you can see the crit, how much damage it's doing. So headshot stop him from his charge usually. Look at that. Look how much damage they're doing. There we go. It's just it's just eating Phantom Ganon's health. Do a little dodge there. Look at me. So cool. Shield surfing underground. Here we go with another shot. Boom. On the face. He's coming at me again. And he's going to get the hit. Going to waste some raw materials because I did not cook enough. So just eat that real fast. I'm going to get back up here. And you don't want to step in these puddles. You stay in there long. You're going to lose hearts. And they're not going to be able to be recovered down here. Because this is technically underground. In the depths. So here he comes. I'm trying again. I'm not the best archer, but getting the shots in, doing massive damage with Gibdel Bones. Just imagine if you had a Lionel bow that did like three arrows a piece. All right, he whacks me down here. He's just consuming more, more raw materials. At this point, I, I think I want to be cool and take out a weapon to try to fight him after this next shot. There you go. He's almost done. Then just go for the final shot. And he's down. And you're going to see all the gloom disappear from underneath the tree, which is basically going to be fixing Korok Forest. So these, these guys are corrupting the area. So that's going to go away. You're going to find some dark clumps, which you can use to make gloom resistance. The Demon King's Bow. And you'll be picking up the Gloom Sword, which is 41 attack. So pretty good stuff here. Uh, good upgrades, especially for your weapons um, in the game. And also these, these hands and these Phantom Ganons will just randomly appear wherever you fight the hand. So it's always the phase two when you kill those those big five hands. Just to let you guys know in case you bump into them again. Okay, once you're done down here, just teleport back to the shrine right above in the Korok Forest. Now go ahead and climb over to the Great Deku Tree and talk to him to proceed on with this quest. You're then going to unlock a memory, but I'm not going to show anything of that on the screen. After that, the Great Deku Tree tells you that it senses the Master Sword in the air. And the only thing to me that constantly moves around the world at all times is a dragon. So that's pretty much what we're going to get. The Master Sword is in a dragon. By saving the Korok Forest from the Gloom, this is the only quest that will allow you to properly track the exact location of the Master Sword. So I looked at my map and saw that the dragon that had the Master Sword was heading towards a certain direction. So I teleported over to the Ori Mountain Skyview Tower. And right after I unlocked it, the most beautiful scene I've ever seen happened. Look below! The dragon is right there with the Master Sword. I see something glowing below me. 
and that's exactly where the dot is it's like the most perfectly timed scene ever so remember when i told you that you needed to get your stamina to two bars this is where it's going to matter and now you're just going to hold this thing and you're going to see your stamina bar start to deplete and then once you're done you'll be dropped off and the dragon will fly away and you'll have the notification that you have the master sword now that you got the master sword you're also going to need to get something else you should click on this video because it's going to help you out a lot